Athletic board at USC, and she joins us now via the gridiron. There we guys. go. Good thing she's not on the tag board. We couldn't see her. You can trust family owned since 2003. The gridiron guys have grown to become Northeast Ohio's top rated roofer. <laughs> we exemplify mm. quality work practices and are a valued that resource a for homeowners and offer a 10 year workmanship warranty. Call 330 573 7967 today for a free estimate or roof inspection. Free estimate? Grid, 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 iron guys. <laughs> so we're going to class the show up a lot. We're going to go from G. Bush biting his nails. Yeah. Jen Matthews, welcome to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports hey. Show. I told you guys. I told you. We just classed it up a whole bunch. Start. I was quite distracted. I was quite distracted there. Imagine. Him, uh, biting his yeah. <laughs> My mom's going to lose I her gotta mind. I got to say to Jen Matthews, I mean, What's your problem? How come you haven't made it to the NFL like the entire rest of your family? What is going Slacker. on here? And what happened? I absolutely, you know what? I'm just a failure. No, I, okay. <laughs> true story. You know, so my dad decides to take up mountain biking during COVID. So I go with him and he is in phenomenal shape. Like, I, I don't know how many of you have seen him recently, but the guy is a freak of nature. He is. So he takes me out. It's 100 degrees and this is his new hobby. So we're going, I honestly think I'm going to die. And he's like, it's mental toughness. Like pain is weakness, leaving your body. And I was like, dad, no, I don't know what military quote this is. I want to die. And then we get to the top. I almost fall off my bike. And he says, he looks back and said, you would have never made it in the NFL. And I'm like, I wasn't trying. <laughs> what a chill dad. So, when your dad's Clay yeah. Matthews, the bar is very, very high. Yeah. <laughs> the bar is very, very, you know, Jen, I did see Clay. Uh, you were in a couple of years ago and uh, I had a chance to interview Pops. And the first thing I thought when he walked in, we did it at, the, at one of the suites at the stadium. He walked in and the very first thing I thought was, are you kidding me right now? The guy, it was like when Joe Charbonneau was in. Yeah. It's the second we saw Joe Charbonneau, we we're like, this guy is incredible, is in incredible shape. And you're dead. Does he work out three hours a day? How does he stay like that? Big Clay. See, growing up, we call my, well, I call my, I called him dad, but other people called him Big Clay and my brother, Little Clay. No one is little <laughs> in this family, but um, he trains now, I think three days a week. So wow. when Clay, my brother Clay recently moved out of state, but when he was here, he would train with Clay and Casey, my brother too in the NFL. So he would do their entire off season plan. And I'll, I'll have to send this video to you guys or post it, but it's a video of they finish their workout and they're doing push-ups and then they like give high fives, push-ups, high five like to each other. And Clay was like, oh my gosh, it almost looks like dad is outperforming me. I'm like, hey, that that could be, but you know, it's that, uh, yeah, he's he stays in shape. So he's kind of just a freak of nature. But really most about that, that interview. So he's talking about, you know, the ring of honor and really kind of how uncomfortable he is with all the attention. And he said, you know, my daughter's been spearheading this and, and she's a pit bull. And you, you chimed in and said, she is a lovely pit bull. And I, I'm sitting on the side of the room going, okay, I've never been called a pit bull. So that's kind of odd, Dad. I, I feel like I'm a pretty nice person, but I am, I'm determined with when it comes to You that, know, so. Jen, what comes to mind to me, and I, I, I still, and I, I have people tell me that I'm a homer and, and that I'm, I'm weighing into the fact that I'm a Browns fan, but how your dad isn't in the Hall of Fame, and I've had so many arguments with voters and writers, and I, I watched his entire career. And when you compare his numbers to the guys that are there, I, I think it's slam dunk. But I'm not even using that as my, as my litmus test. I just watched him. I watched him impact games. And I think one of the things that I most love about all of the discussion around your dad ultimately not getting in, but every year when the campaign was on, I've never seen a daughter work harder for a dad yeah. than you did for your dad, Clay. And I have a daughter and we have an incredibly special relationship. And it just, it just really touched my heart to see how much work you put into that, how much it obviously shows your love of your father. And I still think it's just a swing and a miss that, that your dad is not in, in the pro football hall of fame. Yeah, you know, I agree. And and this is how it started. Obviously, I've been accused of, of, you know, being biased because my dad off the field is 
the greatest human. He's humble and kind. He is such a good father, such a good husband. Like he's just the greatest man. But so I obviously always thought he belonged in the Hall of Fame and I, and I watched him. I mean, he started playing before I was born, but he retired just before I turned 16. So I had a good chunk of time that I remember his his body of work. But what I did was I'm like, you know, what? I'm going to kind of dive in, look at all the stats compared to current Hall of Famers and see if maybe I am just biased. And as I began to kind of dive deep and look at the stats and compare them to current Hall of Famers who are stud players and ever so deserving there's a reason they're in the hall of fame i'm like wait his stats are comparable if not better than so many of them and then i started talking to coaches and players and i mean opposing players opposing uh, opposing coaches and i'm talking to to bill kelly um anthony munoz and everyone is saying it's it's crazy that he's not in the hall of fame so the more i looked at it And the more I kind of dove into the stats, I thought, this is ridiculous. And I think what hurts my dad is the fact that he's a humble guy. He's not on social media. He will never promote himself. He's very uncomfortable with being in the spotlight, which that's one of the greatest things about him. And um, But I believe it will happen. And I'm thinking this year, guys, what do you think about my dad and Joe Thomas the same year? And Cleveland takes over Canton, and we yeah. just party all night. Can you get that done? That would, that would be so <laughs> cool. And I got, and I got to say, Jen, I, you know, I'm the only one on this panel that did not grow up a Browns fan. I grew up in New York, if you couldn't tell from my accent, right? And yet, but I followed the AFC, AFC North because, believe it or not, I grew up a Bengals fan Central in New York, then. which is a long story. Yeah, wow. but, yeah, bizarre, bizarre, but. I always thought, but I always loved watching your dad play when he would play against the Bengals or whatever. And there were a lot of Browns fans in New York where I grew up, a lot of older Browns fans. And so I always thought he was a Hall of Famer. And I'm not biased like the rest of the panel. You said you were worried about you being biased. I've always thought he was a Hall of Famer. Even before I started working here, uh, I just assumed he would go in the Hall of Fame. I've been surprised that he hasn't to this, you know, and I can understand the frustration. How does he feel about it? You talk about him being so humble. I, does it bother him? Does he? I mean, are you more? It seems. Are you more upset about it than he is? Yeah. No, that's a great question because so there's five of us kids. I'm yeah. the only girl, and then I have four brothers. And I feel like we were more upset. I mean, I could tell he was disappointed. It would be a huge sure. honor. But as he always tells me, Jennifer, my time in the league, like I didn't do it for the awards or the accolades. I did it because I loved the game of football and anything I accomplished. I did with the support of my teammates. You know, I was on the sh- standing on the shoulders of my teammates. So for me to receive an individual award, though it would be so, you know, incredible, it's not like it, it's, it doesn't define him, right? right? But then again, like even my brother Clay and I are texting the other night and it's like midnight his time. And he's like, this is so overdue. Like, how is he not in? I don't get it. Like I modeled my play after him. Then I was talking to Troy Palomalu, who obviously was you know first ballot guy played years later i went to to college to usc with troy and he was saying you know complimenting him and talking about his style of play and and how he modeled so much of his game after him and bill cower again is saying you know well and remember bill cower was my dad's backup in cleveland the note and Bill wrote for your dad is incredible isn't that awesome it's, it, it's- he you know, he's such a great human being. I know there's no love for the Steelers in Cleveland, and I understand. But Bill Cower, we got to remember he had some time with the Browns, and he was incredible. Like I when love I, Bill it was the first time I met him, and he said, "You know, your dad taught me things that I, you know, as a coach, used time and time again." And you know, my dad's humble response is, "Oh, he's probably just mixing me up with someone else." And I'm, like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he knew who he was talking about. Yeah. You know, Jennifer, your uh, dad wrecked a lot of game plans. Uh, your brothers wrecked a lot of game plans defensively. Uh, can Uncle you tell Uncle. us? Can you tell us? Um, have they wrecked your love life at one point in time? <laughs> <laughs> because great question. No, because I'm not coming. I, yeah, I'm not showing up at your house. I, I should have known. Okay, so. Um, I just recently got engaged, and probably the hey, reason that it was- Congratulations! 
probably the reason that it took so long was <laughs> if I was going to date you, you had to get through my four brothers, my father, and my uncle Bruce, right? Yeah, so not intimidating at all. I'm like, you will show up. I, my dad's old school. You will shake his hand. <laughs> you will have me home on time. I mean, I'm mm. a grown adult. And, and uh, <laughs> that's how it went. So I, it kind of weeded out like the people who weren't going to make it. They're like, what? I'm like, cold the herd. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, luckily, they, they love my fiance and, and the boys do too. And I remember going, oh my gosh, this is, I'm going to start with one brother at a time. Yep. I'll probably wait for my brother to go last he's probably the toughest okay i'll start with casey he's usually more easy but that is a very good question <laughs> that is a great question <laughs> That's funny. someone finally got through the gauntlet yeah shout out to your fiance you're a good dude you're a strong guy you better be in shape too Quick fuck. <laughs> gotta be in shape. You're ready to go. To hang in this family. You gotta be good. Yeah, you are. Okay. Take you on a what are your Yahtzee you games like? I, I, I just imagine like the whole family sitting around a table playing Yahtzee and somehow or another things get thrown. So tense. It's gotta be intense. Okay. Well, because everything is a competition, right? Sure. Like sometimes people will laugh and I'm like, this family isn't any bit competitive. Like I roll. <laughs> You know what? I think actually there's a story that, I mean, I was too young to remember it, but the night before my uncle Bruce got married or two days before, my dad and him were playing a one-on-one -on -one, like basketball in my parents' backyard. And Bruce somehow ended up with like a black eye. And my aunt <laughs> my, was like, I am going to kill you. What are you doing with being married? And so we had to like cover it all up. And, you know, oh, even great. growing up, you know, I'm the only girl and I'd be like, hey, want to play horse? And it's like, sure. And it's not, they didn't take it easy on me. You know, mm -hmm. I'm like the only girl. I'm like elbowed and boxed out. And I'm like, at a certain age, I had to be like, all right, guys, we're at a different level of strength right wise now. Like, we can't be like, <laughs> we can't be knocked out. Like, I can play, but don't, you know, take it easy when you're boxing me out, you know, under yeah. the hoop. I have a, another, probably a bit of an odd question, but has anybody ever approached you or your family about purchasing your DNA and trying <laughs> to create their own army of super football? I mean, that's a great question. I've got to believe maybe somebody did. That's crazy. With the, with the cost of gas out here in Los Angeles, I should have really thought about that. Yeah, no way um, loot. People used to joke in college, I think it was like a newer thing, and they would advertise. It was the strangest thing. It was the USC paper was called the Daily Trojan, and it would be like, sell your eggs and, you know, pay your tuition. I remember thinking, hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. People were like, are you kidding me? You have eight NFL players in your family? Right. And I was like, I, I, don't, I don't know about that. I just, you know, never I'm just trust. thankful I didn't. Yeah, I'm just thankful I didn't come out like six, five, you know, 400 yes. pounds. With that is a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> but if never use a glass around Jerry Jones and leave it unattended on a table. Because <laughs> he will take that. You ain't nothing. Just so you know. You, know, you ain't nothing. Yeah, right? Speaking you know, <laughs> of Jerry Jones, so I'm at, I'm at the Hall of Fame luncheon before the Super Bowl in Miami a few years ago. And I had never met Jerry, and I walk up and um, – when I'm friends with Jim Fossil, who he had hired as a special teams coach, and I walk up to introduce myself. I said, hello, Mr. Jones. My name's Jennifer Matthews. I'm part of the Matthews family. I said, and I want to tell you, you've got a heck of a special teams coach. Like, I'm like selling my friend here. I'm like, he's an amazing hire. We're going to do a football camp with you and serve inner city kids. And my friend was like, who are you telling Jerry Jones? <laughs> tell you guys are going nice. to do a community outreach project. And I told Coach Fossil later, I, we call him Bones. I said, Bones. You can pay me later because I put in a good, you know, a word with with the big man. But he, in his southern accent, he said something like, "Well, you must be the Bryans and the beauty of the Matthews family," you know. And I'm like, "Well, <laughs> such a I Texas don't, I don't know much competition over here. I don't know how pretty these boys are." <laughs> hey, Jennifer, you know, we were uh, right before you came on. Mikey McNuggets, our producer, did a top five list of college football helmets. You mentioned that you're a, a, a Trojan alum. He did have them in the top five of football helmets, but he, but he did right. not have Notre Dame on the top five. Now I hate Notre Dame, but it's a. T I Me think too. it's a top five helmet. Yeah. So what do you think? What do you think about Notre Dame not being well, in the top five? Well, this is five? Such a conflict of interest. It is because I, you know, as a USC fan, I'm like born and bred to hate Notre Dame. Yeah. Listen, there is a lot of tradition. I'll give them that. Let me take my bias out. They do have the cool helmets. You got to think of Rudy, and there there is some. There's nothing like being in South Bend, Indiana, on a good fall day when the skies are blue and the leaves have turned and Touchdown Jesus is there, and then 
they come out, I don't like their music. And that's about where my appreciation it. ends. It um, oh, whoa, how does everyone feel about, you know, my Trojans and the, the that other team across LA, the, the lowly we, Bruins joining the, the Big Ten? I don't feel like we're getting much love. I, you know, I think, I don't know. I, I think people are so used to at this point, the conference is changing and blowing up. I mean, I, I think, you know, it's all about money, right? It's to get the L.A. market with those two schools. I, what, what do you think about it as, as a Pac-12 alum? Yeah, you know what? It's interesting, too. I'm on the board of directors for the athletic department um, at SC, and we were in a meeting. Here's my thought. The traditional side of me, it makes me a little bit sad. I grew up with the Pac-10, which became the Pac-12, when my parents, who met their high school suite, or excuse me, college sweethearts from USC, it was the Pac-8. So there's a part of me that is sad about that, but I also understand it's a business. And at the end of the day, right. you know, it's about money and it's about TV rights. And, you know, on the West Coast, a lot of people have argued like, look, we don't get primetime games. We don't get as many Heisman players because these games are on at 7 p.m. Pacific. So on the East Coast, that's 10 o'clock. And, and really it's a business. And with NIL and all of that, it's just, it's changed the game. And I think there's just going to be a few mega conferences, but I'm like, what is this? The big 16 now? Like, are they going <laughs> to, <laughs> that's it. Ten. Jen, how oh, the God. hell did you guys keep that under wraps? Um, I wasn't privy to that information even before, but I will say that, um, you know, Mike Bone and obviously Lincoln Riley and then Brandon Sosna who left to go work with the lions. They, they did a good job. That was Sosna who's, He's a stud, but I don't know if, how familiar you are with him. But young guy, he helped, you know, recruit Lincoln Riley. They did a good job because what it leaked that morning and six hours later, it was released. So that was pretty impressive in today's day and age. I was shocked yep. that that didn't Bom get out. Because so, bombshell stories like that don't just develop. That thing had been in the works for yeah. a long time. And the fact yeah. that oh. nobody leaked it is just, yeah. it's mm -hmm. astonishing, really. Huge. You're like, what was threatened? No. <laughs> you will disappear if. <laughs> I'm yeah. looking forward to that USC Northwestern rivalry development. Right. That's going to be a doozy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, our Trojans are going to have a lot of travel on their. Uh, they're going to be, you Man. know, racking up some frequent flyer miles. You aren't kidding. Yeah. I mean, does it make me like a 10 year old that I still giggle every time I hear Trojans? Yes. 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 Right. Yes. I mean, it's, come on. Right, because of the pro we all giggle. Yeah, because of the, it's also a prophylactic. Right, I mean it's funny. <laughs> yes, thank you for right. no, no problem. By the you, would not, you would not believe the shirts that are made. I won't go into it. Oh, I would eat some good ones. <laughs> lady. But you would not believe between SC and you said some of the shirts and the thing. I mean, I won't. I'll leave that up to you to, to um, well, I'm look at that. But I gotta say, yeah, you must have the some good ones. I, I, I mean, I'm, it's like fun facts about all of you. I'm like, okay, so someone does makeup. Like G -Bush. some of you don't believe oh, yeah. in shoes on or like socks. It's like the no sock look on the end. That's like that's you know, Jay. I, I that's really Jay. No sock. That's Jay. Jen, I don't wear socks. I don't. I don't understand how he gets that off. It's a personal preference. <laughs> He's a boss and he can do what he wants. I appreciate. G that. Bush does makeup, nah. which is just absolutely incredible. Well, listen, I you know you I. I got into it because I wanted to get my lighting good on my YouTube videos. And so makeup artists have the best lighting. And so there was this guy who was just, you know, hanging around. And I always say the guy looked like Mike Polk mm -hmm. after the makeup job. Yep. He looked just like a, a hot girl. I was like, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. This is about to work. And so I learned to do makeup tutorials. It, was, it looks great. Are you saying Mike would be a hot girl? Uh, yeah, he's I mean, a little too tall for my liking. I understand. But, yeah, yep. he, yeah, I think we should do a show where you make him up and see how hot you can make him. Probably not excited about that. I can do that. The I'm not above it. To go. I'm, I'm not it. above it. I'll bring my I'll bring my ring light. Yeah, we appreciate the analysis of our look in our show, though. We we're, we've really tried to create an aesthetic here that's pleasing to the eye. Do you like Do you like it? <laughs> I do. And I feel I I've really got to see him make you up. Your good good pal, you know, palette you're striking with good good bone structure. I, I'm waiting to see what he can do. And I'm trying to when I'm back in town and I come to the set, I want to like I want to see him work some. I want to let's do it. Please please come and yes. Please come and watch. It will him be our highest makeover. rated show. I yes. will even bring my cape. I'll bring all of my. I'll even break out my good makeup. I'll I'll break out the Mac. <laughs> break my good stuff out. <laughs> Yeah. Next level, you don't mess around. I like this is not no amateur. Out here. Jen, would you mind if I use? Would you mind if I used uh, the fact that you complimented my bone structure on my resume moving forward? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 
I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Jen Matthews Thank once you. said, I have great bone structure. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. That, hey, that means a lot. Jen, on your I, I want to go back to the Hall of Fame deal for a second yeah. because I know your dad can't be on the writer's ballot anymore. What is, what is the path for Clay to Canton? How does that happen right. now? So now as of last year, he went to the senior category. Now the, the great thing about this is, so the Hall of Fame got a new president and their board met and voted and decided that for the next three years, for 23, 24, and 25, that instead of one senior per year being inducted, they would do three per year. So oh, over wow. the next three years, there will be nine seniors as opposed to three. Wow. And part of the reason they did that is there's such this huge backlog of deserving players that are kind of just sitting there. And now, you know, when guys are retiring and they're more in the limelight, they're kind of getting more of the attention. Mm-hmm. So my dad now is part of the senior, you know, category. And they narrow, they just released the, the 25. It'll then be voted down to, I believe, 12 or 15 july 27th i believe it is and then in august they can um decide on three and those three need to get 80 percent of the vote of the senior committee so it's a different it's not you know if you're a modern era candidate it's you know the big all of the voters from the different media markets and then there are a few at large voters and then like for instance cleveland obviously has two with mary Kay cabot and tony grossi um other markets have too. So this is a smaller, a smaller group of voters that votes on that. And then the obviously the contributor, that's a separate thing. So we'll see. I will keep plugging away because until until it happens. And it will happen. And we're gonna take over Canton. And here's the cool thing. Browns fans are the best. I'm not just saying that. I live in Los Angeles. I, I've lived and traveled all over. I've been to every NFL stadium. I've been around football my whole life. Browns fans have a knowledge of the game that is second to none, and they're loyal. So when my uncle was inducted in 2007, I believe it was, you know, here we are in Canton, and I looked around, and there were so many 57 jerseys. It was it was incredible. And when my uncle, you know, he spent like, I swear, seven minutes of his speech talking about my dad, and my dad is just sweating bullets. And I was there next to him, he goes, oh. Stop talking about me, my brother. He's hitting me going, oh, I hope he's stuck. And the camera's on my dad. And <laughs> there's 57 jerseys everywhere. And yeah. my uncle Bruce afterwards came up and he's like, Jennifer, imagine when your dad gets in. Can you imagine this place? Like, this you know. Yeah. Gotta happen. In Canton. Or when Joe Thomas gets in, which he yeah. will this year. Like he, uh, another one of my favorite Browns. So that, we'll see. I mean, he's in the senior category. And uh, my hope and prayer is this year, but I'll keep plugging away and working and, and doing everything I can until he's inducted. Je- Jennifer, you've had, you obviously you've worked in the media. You know, some, you mentioned the local voters here. Have you ever gotten any feedback from the writers on, on why? What, it, what, what was the issue? Why did they never elect him? Yeah. You know what? Most of the people I've talked to are like, he's deserving, right? And then he's been a semifinalist, you know, four years. And I'm like, what's the deal here? And the only thing that kept coming up was like, there's this magic number of 100 sacks that like, as you know, as a linebacker or a pass rusher, they want you to be at 100. But the silly thing about this is that number one, my dad was drafted in 78, right? 12th overall pick, first round, same year that Ozzy was drafted, like amazing draft for the Browns. For his first five seasons, sacks weren't even counted as an official stat, which is nuts, right? And then he, at that point, they didn't have kind of, they just, he wasn't really a pass rusher until far, like the latter part of his career. Like every once in a while he would, and he would like given his, like if if it was up to him, he would have lined up at kind of like a DM, like my brother did and just pass rushed. But he, I always say he was the consummate team player. So he was often dropping back into coverage. Like he did it all. And that's what, when I talked to like opposing like O-linemen, they were like, we kind of had to, to, you know, develop our game plan around him because he was all over the place and we didn't know what he was going to do. So, so when you add in, so I went back and I looked at the stats because the team kept the sacks as a stat before the league declared them as an official stat in 83. And so that took him up to 83.5. And again, I'm kind of like, it's weird that certain numbers are that. That's the only thing I could think of. But honestly, in my opinion, what's really hurt him is that he's a quiet guy. And when he retired, he he went completely out of the limelight because he never liked that anyways. He said, I kind of, 
you know, I just went to raising five kids. Like I had no time to sit around and think about football or feel sorry for myself or, or miss it. He goes, cause I had five kids at home to take care of. So he kind of went into coaching and, you know, just did his thing and, and we never really thought about it, you know? And so, but he has so many records, you know, if you look at it, most games played by an NFL linebacker of all time, most sacks by a Browns player. Now Miles Garrett's coming up on him, um, hmm. which, which is good company. Such a stud. Yeah. I know, I know. When I, I'm thinking about the defense, I'm like, Miles Garrett, Jadavian Clowney, and I'm looking at all like, Greedy Williams. I'm looking at this going, I like this. We can get after the quarterback, which is mm-hmm. what I like to see. This is pass rush. <laughs> so. um, two, there's really no good reason, by the way. Sorry to cut you off. No, there's, there's literally no. no good reason not to have him in. I think she would know better. Genevieve, you would, you would know better than anybody. I think it is. I think what you just pointed out about your dad pulling himself out of the limelight I think that's the number one reason. Some players get more hype after their career. There's no stats or there's nothing you could point to that says, oh, he's not a Hall of Famer because of this. There's really nothing. It doesn't make any sense. And all you need to know, you mentioned Anthony Munoz. I've heard Anthony Munoz talk about your dad before. In my opinion, Anthony Munoz is the greatest offensive lineman ever. If you get an endorsement for him from him, that's all I need to hear. If Anthony Munoz says you're a Hall of Famer, you're a Hall of Famer in my book. I think it's pretty simple. That, it, yeah, it'll get right. I hope it'll get right sooner rather than later, so your whole family yeah. can appreciate it. But it, it's it's. I know, and I'm thinking big. Like I'm I'm a dreamer, so I'm going. Let's have like the Rolling Stones at the after party. Like who am I? I don't know. I don't know <laughs> that person. You know, like, that brown band. I'm like this is going to be the party of all parties because my dad has waited, and I'm going to use every connection I have to make this. Nice. Pretty dang fun party. You so know who we'll else see. needs to play there? Because I just did this math, and I think you're if you put it in Rock and Roll Hall of Fame snubs in that territory, like for a comparison's sake, your dad is Judas Priest. Judas Priest <laughs> should have been on the Rock Hall 25 years ago. They're amazing. They are an important part of metal history. They're not in because of prejudices against, against metal. Against metal yeah, that's true. No doubt. Yeah. They should be in there. And it's a shame they're not. And when you have your celebration, Judas P- Priest should play there. One more thing. My parents have been season ticket holders. Uh, they were. They gave up uh, at some point. But they were uh, when I was a kid. And the two jerseys they still have, uh, my dad wears a Gene Hickerson jersey. <laughs> And my oh, mom yes. wears Clay Matthews, just so you know. So that's that's you know uh, the regard like that they hold you. I feel like we'd be kindred spirits. I Gene think you'd love Peggy Bull. the year that my uncle was. So I, he, and, <laughs> and what he said about that was he, they had waited so long. He was so much older, but what an incredible player. When you look yeah. back at the history and like I got to meet Jim Brown when I was there for the Ring of Honor and I was sitting there. It was so surreal. We're on the practice field at the Browns facility and my dad had never met him, believe it or not. So. <laughs> I'm there with my dad and, and Jit, you know, and they're exchanging stories. And I had this like moment where I just was like, soak this up because this is, this doesn't happen for everyone. Like, this yeah, is, it's a weird upbringing they've had. And they're talking about the Browns and just different plays and watching each other. And, you know, my dad saying how much he had looked up to him as a player, like when he was a kid. And, and those are the moments where I'm like, man, this, this life is, is so cool. It's so well, good. It's good that you appreciate it. Well, Jim, yes. um, I don't I, think I, he's taking it for granted. I hope you're ready because when he gets in, I have a sneaking suspicion. I don't know, it's just an intuition. I think you are going to give the induction speech. Uh, so you know, how how would that pressure. feel to be able to do that? Um, and you've been working so hard uh, for the last few years um, trying to get him in. You know what's funny? I haven't even thought of that because I guess I'm just still like in the stage of like all my the time I do invest in things around the Hall of Fame or just in creating awareness for his campaign. I mean, obviously it would be an honor of a lifetime and I don't know if I could possibly do him justice. I mean, I, and I, I probably won't, wouldn't make it through without crying. Cause I just, I respect him. Like he's my hero. He's the person I, I model my life after. And um, just the way he approached the game, I, even been able to take a lot of those lessons and, and habits into my career and, and really apply them. And I feel like it's allowed me to excel and, and also, you know, just being inspired by the type of human he is. He's a man of integrity and humility and, and he's very selfless and he, he serves others and, um, and he's fun. Like the, my dad snowboards, like we, we were, <laughs> we were in Colorado two years ago and he's like blowing past us. I'm on my skis, like, you know, on the beginner slope and he comes down the other and I'm like, what 65 year old man snowboards. And, you know, he's just, he's fun. He's high energy. 
he likes to drive a 67 Chevy Camaro around. Like he loves nice. classic cars and he's just, he's just fine. He's the greatest. I like that our dads are about the same age and I have to help him get out of a chair. <laughs> <laughs> You have to help me get out. Uh -huh. What you mean? Me too. Uh, well, I hope I don't have to help. I wouldn't be able to move my father. I, no, I don't know you better. That's gonna be you gotta work on some just some squats. <laughs> I, do I better get in the gym quick and get on some sort of workout. Clay, he really is uh, like a like a movie character. Yes, um, he's bigger than life. He's he's a quiet guy. I was surprised when I met him that he really is a man of few words. Hates to talk about himself. And uh, I I hope, <clears throat> Jen, that your father has to make the difficult decision as to who would be his presenter in yeah. Canton, Ohio. I'll be there. Half of Cleveland will be there. And you're right. It would be a, a Cleveland takeover of Canton and the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Jen, thank you so much for making time hey. with us. And we're going to hold you to that. When you're in Cleveland, you, you must. so fun. Yeah, thank listen, you. that's our, <laughs> our whole objective is to laugh and have fun talking about sports. Why not? I love it. I love it. Jen, when you're in Cleveland, let us know, and uh, we'd love to have you in studio, okay? I will be there. You guys are too fun. I'll come Thank out anytime you. you want. And you have to promise us that when, not if, when Dad gets uh, the rubber stamp to go into Canton, that you bring Dad by the studio, too, because we would love to have him in as well. You bet. You All bet. Right, Jen. Thanks, Jen. All right. Congrats and congratulations. Bye. The prettiest Bye. Matthews of the bunch. <laughs> <laughs>